Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, my name is Arun. Uh, I'm a senior engineer at uh, Yahoo's OpenStack team um, from uh, San Francisco Bay Area. My talk is on things we have learned from scaling Ironic at Yahoo. My talk has three, four parts. First part is on our cluster architecture and background. Second part is on Ironic and Ironic Conductor. Third, we'll discuss about Neutron and Neutron DSCP agent issues. And fourth, uh, we'll discuss about the importance of doing a density test. And finally, there'll be time for questions. Also, uh, please feel free to ask any questions in the middle. So Yahoo has hundreds and thousands of servers in its data centers. These servers are used to serve anything from Yahoo's front page, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Mail. And these servers need to be managed by a coherent system. So we decided to use OpenStack Ironic to manage all the compute resources at Yahoo. This talk is about things we learned from scaling Ironic at Yahoo. Let's dive into our cluster architecture. Sorry about that. So hopefully it's visible there. So we have um, Ironic cluster in every major data centers. Uh, Yahoo data centers, and in the in the middle, uh, this is our we have like three API boxes. All these API uh, boxes run uh, most of our Ironic API services. It runs Keystone, Glance, Nova, uh, Ironic API, all the APIs. Apart from APIs, uh, these API servers also run uh, Nova Scheduler and Nova Compute. So Nova Scheduler and Compute are behind a leader election script, so we have some kind of HA going on there. And, and the users access the APIs through a BIP and an ATS. Um, and these APIs are connected to a database. Uh, there are two databases in master and slave modes, and uh, we also have two message queues. And on the right side, we have Ironic Conductor. So, Ironic Conductor, we have two machines. Uh, these basically create the Pixie configuration uh, OS, you know, creating the things needed to boot an OS in a node. This Ironic Conductor is also connected to our out-of-band uh, network. So this is how we basically turn on and off machines over IPMI. And Ironic Conductor generates all the Pixie configuration and the OS kernel RAM disk and all those things and writes into a NFS share. And this NFS share is read-write read mounted on each, every, each and every conductors. So this NFS share also read-only mounted on a box called ITS. We call it the Ironic Transport Service. So we do not have a Ironic uh, Transport Service in an upstream, so this is a Yahoo-specific thing. So basically, Ironic Transport Service runs DHCP, TFTP and Apache to serve the operating system files. Since DHCP runs there, we also have the Neutron DHCP agent running there to uh, receive a uh, DHCP notification from Neutron. We also use iPixie. So um, whenever a node boots, uh, the iPixie binary is sent over TFTP, and everything from there is HTTP. So before Ironic, Yahoo had a mix of um, Grizzly uh, bare metal and a legacy uh, imaging system. So we had to move all these machines, which are actually serving production traffic, powering Yahoo.com and Yahoo Mail, uh, to the new system. Yahoo has an inventory database called OpsDB. 
this DB has information about every, each and every compute resources at Yahoo. So each and every OpsDB entry can have a host name, macOS of that machine. Even it has information about in which rack, which data center this machine is on, and which switch this particular uh, server is connected to. So we, to import nodes, we basically uh, leveraged our internal OpsDB, imported this node, uh, created this ironic node, create node, using in the information from OpsDB. Once the ironic node is created, we also set the driver to initially to fake Pixie. We do not directly use the Pixie IPMI tool driver, so we switch to fake Pixie first. And then we know, also know the IP address, the existing IP address and the MAC address of the machine. So we can also create a neutron port. So we create a neutron port as well. And then we do an operation called fake boot. As the name implies, it creates a NOVA instance and associates this instance with the ironic. So NOVA instance have a, have a UID, and uh, to associate something with ironic, um, the instance UID will, will also show up in ironic. So this is similar to the new adoption state in ironic. So ironic supports uh, this new thing called adopting. So you can put a node in uh, from enroll to manageable and to adoption, and then without ever touching the node, you can turn the node into active state. So the similar thing happened here. This is because this machines are serving traffic. We do not, do not want to reboot them. We do not want to um, um, like reimage them because it will affect production. So once everything is successful, we clean up all the metadata about uh, images. Um, when every, uh, once the instance become active, uh, we switch to the Pixie IPMA tool driver. So if a customer, let's say, belongs to Yahoo Mail, and now uh, we fake booted a bunch of Yahoo Mail nodes into Ironic, so when he uses OpenStack, he will access the OpenStack API through Nova. So the customers do not directly have access to Ironic API, since Ironic is an admin-only API. So when the customer does Nova list uh, with a mail tenant, they will see the new Ironic nodes imported and running. They can now do rebuilds, delete, do whatever they want with the nodes. So this is how we imported uh, existing nodes that are running in production to Ironic. Let's talk about Ironic service itself. We have Ironic service, Ironic API, running behind Ap Apache servers. So the three API servers initially we saw, all these three API services run Ap uh, Ironic APIs behind Apache. We also have two Ironic conductors. We initially started with just two conductors in two separate machines. These machines have something around like 24 gigs of RAM and 24 core CPUs. So what could possibly go wrong? Okay, that did not happen, right? Similar, similar to something happened. Um, around when we imported around like 10,000 nodes, so we were like ramping up uh, new, adding new nodes into Ironic and booting them. The Ironic uh, boot started to fail. We also saw the Ironic conductor had high CPU usage. So Ironic conductor is a conductor process. We saw the top, it was always at like 90, 90 to 100% CPU. And our, cust our service engineers complained that it took so long for the Ironic API to respond. Obviously, Ironic conductor is busy, so any conductor operations like Ironic node set power state, node set maintenance, all these things took a long time, so they were complaining. So first to address is the high CPU usage. We wanted to know why Ironic conductor was basically taking high, uh, you know, consuming a lot of CPU. Um, enter the sync power state. We can also call, the, call it a DOS, DOS API for Ironic. If you want a DOS yeah, Ironic API, you can trigger sync power state. So what sync power state does is uh, it basically, if you have a Pixie IPMA tool driver, it's going to use IPMA tool, get the status of the Ironic node, the power status. 
So the ironic API also has a power status field. This field has the current uh, power status that should be the node on. So a customer can set ironic node set power state, power on, and the power status will be power on. So sync status runs, it's a periodic task. It runs once in a while and checks the current status of the node and syncs those. The sync is from DB to the actual node. So for example, if somebody powered off the machine, the machine should be powered on, it's he or, he or she powered off the machine outside Ironic, the sync power state will come back and power on the machine again. It also a good, uh, it's also a good periodic task to have because if your IPMI BMC fails, sync power state will eventually find that this particular machine is not accessible through IPMI. So we cannot eliminate sync power state because we will not know the st status of our BMCs, how uh, things run in data center. And so sync power state, why it took a so long time? So the default interval for sync power state is around some, some, initially we had around like an hour. So every hour, this periodic task will run and sync the power state from DB to the node. So at 10,000 nodes in a cluster, so this is like initial time, you know, like almost two, one year ago, when we, when we had 10,000 nodes in the cluster, the conductor was busy just doing IPMI tool commands. So it was just forking IPMI tool and uh, checking the power statuses. So obviously we can reduce the periodic task interval. So we reduced it to somewhere around every 24 hours uh, sync power state, run sync power state. We also noticed that in a data center, if your server long, runs for a long time, um, BMC could fail. The firmware in those BMCs leak memory. So whenever you say uh, do an IPMA tool command after 2,000 days of uptime, and your BMC will say, okay, uh, I leaked memory and I cannot respond to you. So it took longer than expected. So now we ran the IPMA tool command, instead of immediately sending the power status, the IPMA tool command, and the BMC will return the status very late. So we cannot do anything about that other than resetting the BMC or working with the hardware vendors to fix it. And it's a hard to reproduce problem as well because this does not happen, the BMC, uh, you know, failure does not happen often. It takes long time to reproduce these problems. And I do not really know why we pay $15,000 for a machine that fails like this. <laughs> so second approach is to increase the number of conductors. I said we, um, we started with um, two conductors, and obviously that's a... Uh, uh, so the conductors use a data structure, distributed data structure called um, hash ring. So the nodes are divided between, so let's say 10,000 nodes, 5,000, maybe 5,000 uh, is handled by one conductor and another 5,000 is handled by another conductor, which is obviously very low. So we wanted to increase the number of ironic conductors. So one solution is to run um, uh, multiple conductors on the same host. This is tricky because how the ironic conductor is designed. Ironic conductor, whenever it comes up, it automatically fetches the host name of the machine and uses that as an identity. So we, as I said, we only had two servers, and these two servers had 24 cores of CPU, so we have 48 cores of CPU, and uh, Python processes normally are bound to one CPU. We weren't using the CPU much. So we wanted to spawn multiple conductors on the same host. So we added a small patch. It's almost like an API worker patch, which will spawn n number of conductors. So the problem with running multiple conductors on the same host is there could be some um, race conditions. There is another periodic task called sync local state in ironic conductor. This sync local state, what it does is if one conductor dies, it, it checks whether it needs to take over the nodes that were managed by the conductor that died. And that is a good thing, right? So if one of the service down, we need to basically move other conductors to manage the service. 
but there could be some race conditions if you're running multiple conductors on the same host. So we haven't tested that, so we disable sync local state. So we just make sure that ironic conductors are up and running all the time. We have better monitoring on ironic conductors. We are running right now around uh, almost 40 conductors per host. So we have like 80 conductors in one cluster um, managing things. And obviously, our SE team, site operations team, were happy because they get results faster from the ironic API. Second, Neutron. To give you a, let me first give an, a background about our Neutron setup. So again, we had three API servers. All these three API servers were running Neutron API. We had 24 API and RPC workers. And we have four uh, Neutron DACP agents. So these are the ones that actually serve the DACP. And all these uh, Neutron subnet and network are managed by all agents. So which means any new network on the Neutron side, uh, the notification goes to all four agents. So we have some kind of HA. So we replace, so that by default, Neutron comes with a uh, driver for DNS mask. So we wrote our own driver for ISE DACPD. So this is our Neutron setup. So to talk details about new, scaling up Neutron, I need to talk about sync local state and the issues with sync local state. Sorry, sync state. Whenever a Neutron agent, DACP agent, restarts, or when it dies, a new network could be added to the Neutron. So somebody could create a Neutron net create, Neutron subnet create, and your agent could be down. It will never receive that notification. So when it comes back up, it needs to know that this new network was added to Neutron and create and do specific action on the DACP side. For example, if a network is, uh, if a subnet is added and uh, the, it comes back up, it needs to create that subnet entry in dacpd.conf file. Your agent is basically talks with the DACPD to do things. So what sync state does is it gets all the network info. Whenever the Neutron DACP agent is restarted, it gets all the network info, goes through every network, every subnet, every port, and recreates all the things it needs to do. So it writes to the DACPD to conf, writes to the lease file. So this happens every time you restart Neutron DACP agent, which means every time you do a new deployment, you need to restart DACP agent, and this needs to be done. So we had two drivers to interact with the DACPD itself. So Neutron DACP agent um, talks to DACPD, and it talks to DACPD using a driver called OM shell driver. And we also another had a driver called pipe uram api driver. Let me talk about OM shell driver and, and see, let's see what it is. OM shell is a um, command, it's a shell, it's a shell command. You can basically run that OM shell and you can connect to your DACP server, which is running on the local host, on port server 911. It also has a hash mac based authentication key so that other users cannot log into a DACP server and do bad things. You can search by MAC address in your lease file, uh, delete the MAC addresses, create new leases. All these things can be done through OM shell and OM API. So OM API driver, so OM shell interacts with the OM API drivers in the OM API API in the DACP side. So as you can see, this is basically spawning shell and basically process.popen and os.communicate and write directly into that process. So when we had the OM shell driver, this is how our um, CPU utilization on Neutron DACP agent. This is during sync state. So whenever we restarted it, the Neutron DACP agent, this happened. So the green line here is the CPU system. So the, when the, whenever the CPU was executing in the kernel space, the red line here, which is at the very bottom, is the CPU usage when the, when, when, on the user space code, when CPU 
was executing user space code on neutron DHCP agent. Since the OM shell is a process, we needed to fork a lot of these processes and write to it. We had seven threads doing you know, seven forks and uh, syncing various things. As you can see, the CPU usage went up. Uh, the x-axis here is the duration, and the y-axis is the load of the system. The load of the system went up, especially, and it was spending too much time on the kernel space. Also, you can see that at the bottom line, the, it's, it's 3,500. Uh, so basically, it ran for an hour. Actually, it ran for several hours. Uh, this, is, this was with 2,500 subnets and 45,000 nodes. So you have like 2,500 subnets to create and 45,000 ports to create. It was very slow. And all these hours, the usage was high. So if, if somebody booted a machine in this time, it would fail because um, it was busy doing this thing. It might not get the agent notification, or it will take some time to process the notification. So this is bad. And then we discovered this new thing called pure Python implementation of OMAP. It's called PyPure OMAP. It's a library. And this is how the CPU uh, load and duration went down. So again, see the red. Sorry, click the long, wrong button. Um, so the red line uh, on top is the, again, the user space, CPU usage. The green line is the kernel space. The x-axis is the duration of the sync state. And y-axis is the load. As you can see, this number is 600. So for 45,000 ports, it took almost 10 minutes instead of several hours. So. The model of the story is never ever fork processes and write, you know, do things, to do things. Instead, if, if there is a pure Python implementation, use that one. So where do we go from here? So as I said, any with OMAPI API, you can write things to the DHCP lease file. Um, but whenever you want to add a new subnet, you need to write to the dhcpd.conf file. Whenever you modify the dhcpd.conf file, we need to restart the DHCP server. And this is not ideal. So we had a VIP. Uh, actually, we have a VIP um, between DHCP, D, and the rest of the um, infrastructure. So whenever the DHCPD restarted, VIP thought um, the DHCPD service was down, and it would not send packets to the DHCPD server for a minute. Now, if you look at Pixie, the Pixie actually tries to do multiple DHCPD, uh, DHCP requests, but if you don't uh, send the packet, WIP send, doesn't send the packet to DHCPD, even though DHCPD restarts are faster, it, it comes back in like two, three, minute, two, three seconds, um, but WIP wouldn't send any packets back to DHCPD because it thought DHCPD was down. Um, we were actually not serving DHCP to the machines that were booting. That's, that were one of the reasons for boot failures. Another um, good approach is to move to the KEA DHCP server. So this is a new DHCP server uh, that is written for high availability by ISC. Uh, so any changes to here, any changes to DHCP.conf doesn't need any restarts. And it has a nice JSON JSON API instead of some OM API, which you need to uh, do process some binaries. And fourth, let's talk about density test. So before uh, we onboard a lot of machines to Ironic, we did something called a scale test. And uh, so basically what we did was um, we booted like 100 machines. We know about 100 machines and see how the system performs, whether it can do 100 parallel boot. It worked well. Um, and then we also did a density test, which means we added a lot of machines to the OpenStack system. We, we imported around like 50,000 nodes into Ironic 
and see how the system performed. At 24,000 uh, nodes, when we, importing, when we were importing 24,100 nodes, the APS server started swapping. So this is how um, things went down. So on the top is the memory usage. The bottom is the swap usage. So the top, um, the orange or saffron, uh, is the used memory. The used memory went up over time. And also, you can see the swap usage. The red is the swap usage. Green means no swap usage. The swap usage went up as well. All happened on week 13. 13 is a bad number. It's really true. Um, so we had 24. This is our staging environment. We were doing the densi density test. We had 24 gigs of RAM. Obviously, uh, the best way to solve this is to increase the number of, amount of RAM in that machine. And the, who's the biggest user of memory is Neutron. So Neutron was consuming around 1.4 gigs. And we had 24 API workers, which means it was just eating a lot of RAM. Um, so obviously, the solution, um, so this was at 2,400 subnets and 43,000 ports. And the easy fix to basically reduce the amount of API workers and RPC workers. So we reduced it from, from 24 to 10. So instead of taking a lot of memory, it would take 10 gigs of memory. Another long-term fix we did was to um, basically, we, we still haven't you know, uh, investigated why it was taking so much memory usage. Um, but we, iso we want to isolate um, Neutron to a separate server so that it does not adversely affect other APIs running on the API servers. I think the Neutron. Uh, it's still it's causing problems in upstream as well, uh, especially with the gate. Uh, their solution is to also reduce the amount of API workers, which is not a scalable solution. So what we learned from running Ironic at scale. So do both a density test and scale test before onboarding uh, new machines. So scale test is, by scale test, what I mean is we basically uh, booted 100 machines and thought, oh, 100 machine booted up, came up, everything is fine. And we started onboarding machines and saw issues. So let's say you, you want to add 50,000 nodes into your Ironic cluster. Do a f density test with 50,000 nodes and figure out what happens. This is like a 101. And if you're using custom code or anything, avoid using, um, avoid spawning processes. So if you want to do a task, especially the periodic task, if you want to do a thing, never spawn processes. Use native Python libraries as much as possible. Also, pay attention to periodic tasks. The default interval for sync power state was some, something around 60 seconds. It does not scale. It does not do well for a 10,000 node cluster or 50,000 node cluster. So pay attention to periodic tasks and all those configuration files. And be prepared to scale horizontally. Your database could swap. Your uh, API nodes could end up swapping because of high memory usage. So always have these additional machines in the subnet so that you can quickly scale up your infrastructure and the API clusters. Yeah. And pay attention to the number of AP conductors, API workers, and RPC workers. And always don't forget to have fun. Any questions? Yes. Oh, so I'm so we assumed there was memory leaks. So these machines, we look, looked at a lot of these machines, and uh, the uptime was several hours. The machines were never rebooted, and we had to de reboot them during the dirty cow. Um, when we tried to reboot, reboot them with IPMI, these machines would take several seconds to respond. So we assumed, we are working with the vendor to figure out what the problem is, but we assume it's a memory leak or the BMC just crashed. better diagnostics we can kind of investigate on it. But. Yeah. So the only thing we could do was uh, do a 
like MC reset call, basically do IPMI tool command MC reset call and pray to God that it works. And if it, <laughs> otherwise somebody has to basically go there and pull the plug and back it in. It, it's, it's bad. We are also managing the same thing uh, with basically we have this active uh, process that scans the machines in data center. And you know before the customer even reboots the machine, we know that this machine has a problem. And we raise tickets for the data center operation folks to go and fix it. So that is one way of coping with that problem. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Uh, about Nova Compute, can you talk a little bit uh, how you, you set up this and the problems that you found about scaling and reliability? For example, how Nova Compute you have for this kind of for the infrastructure that you have? Yes. Uh, so the question is about Nova Compute and how um, it scales. Exactly. Yes. Um, obviously, the uh, the in the upstream core you have the resource tracker which basically runs and tracks all the resources. So we implemented uh, something called the claims API and entirely eliminated resource tracker. Uh, this was based on an older spec that was proposed to address that problem. Um, the new way to fix, it, you know, fix Nova Compute is to basically run multiple Nova Computes. That is supported as well. So Nova Compute now supports that same hash ring that Ironic Conductor supported. That is one thing to look at. Um, so we eliminated resource trackers, so the Nova compute usage was like very less, and we had um, we had Zookeeper behind Nova, Nova compute. So whenever one dies, another comes up through the leader election. That's how we solved it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I think you're talking about the um, S scale, right? And when you have like a more virtual machines running there with the uh, Neutron DHCP agent, right? Have you ever encountered the problem that uh, uh, the DHCP, the Azure session, has never been like uh, refreshed, so that the, 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 the VM you created actually has a problem getting the um, the IP address? Right. When, when, when you have more, like more and more virtual machines gets created. Yes. So in Ironic, we are not talking about virtual machines first. Oh, yeah. We are talking about bare metal actual server hardware sure. first. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So using that OM shell. Uh, driver, basically we were spawning multiple uh, OM shell processes, mm -hmm. and spawning, forking a new process takes time. If the system was busy doing a lot of that stuff, a boot comes in, a new port gets created, it could take some time for the port to be actually reflected back on the DHCP server, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it was doing other things, like the sync state. Um, on that case, we have seen the machine already got powered on, and uh, it started doing Pixie Boot and never received DHCP. Yeah. That is one. Mm -hmm. Another thing we have seen is to, through IP helpers. So sometimes the IP helpers were never on the switch. Second one. And third one is basically that HA. So you need to tell Neutron to send DHCP you know, notifications to all the agents. There's a setting in Neutron Neutron.conf to send how many DHCP agents you want to send the notification about ports and networks. Uh, that is an, another thing to look at as well. Oh, OK. Thank you. Thank uh, I just want to like, uh, find out what, what's, the, what's the root cause. Did you find anything? Yeah, the root cause is basically uh, OM shell and forking a lot of processes. Uh, okay. And we then, then we moved to the native Python pure imp implementation, pure Py pure OM API, and things started to improve there. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, are you running on v6 or v4 or mix uh, network for the Neutron side? And then um, also, based on your experience, right? Uh, what do you think you know, in terms of footprint that you can control with Ironic, how far does it scale on a, on a, you know, a robust single uh, kind of deployment silo? Yes. Um, so first question is, uh, whether we support v4 and v6. So we support v4 and v6, yes. Uh, Neutron ports can have v6 and v4 IP addresses, but we only support um, internally v4 DHCP. So there is no v6 DHCP yet. Um, 
And the, what, is, what is the second question again? Uh, based on your experience, what's your projection in terms of the current rate that you can scale robustly in, before you have to scale out a, a complete style horizontally? What's that footprint look like? Somewhere around 10,000 to 15,000 nodes. Okay. Even then, there had pro we had problems. Okay. But to scale, we want to have somewhere around 70 to 100K nodes in one cluster. Uh, we are going there. We are getting there. Um, and it's interesting. OK. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, the next uh, conference is ready. Thank you.